A real quick explanation of Boyle's law, we have here our classic piston in a cylinder graphic here um, where we trap a gas inside. One of the criteria for Boyle's law is that we keep the temperature and the number of moles of gas constant. So in this illustration, we're going to only be changing the pressure and the volume, which have an inverse relationship. If I had to state Boyle's law, that would be the direct statement of it. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So if we take this diagram and we allow it to compress now, we'll take the same gas, compressing it to a smaller volume, the pressure will go up. Now if we add a plot of pressure versus volume and show you a cycling where we expand and compress the gas through a cycle, you can see from this plot and the dot that we put on it that there's all these states that are possible as you go from compression to expansion. And that's an illustration of Boyle's law and you can use it to solve lots of different gas problems. This is a quick illustration of Charles' law. Charles' law is the relationship between volume and temperature of a gas. Um, we're going to keep the pressure constant and we're going to keep the number of moles constant. As you see here, we have our classic illustration of the piston and cylinder where we entrap a certain volume of gas at a given pressure. In this particular diagram, we're going to now add heat to it with some fire or whatever you want to do to heat the temperature up and then as you can see, as the molecules become hotter, they have more force, they travel quicker, they lift the piston up to a much bigger volume. And so this illustrates the fact that when you increase temperature, you increase the volume. And then if you allow it to cool, take away the heat and allow the gas to cool, the gas will now fall back to a smaller volume as you go to a smaller temperature. So Temperature and volume are directly proportional. You increase one, you increase the other. And if you want them to be directly proportional exactly, you've got to use absolute temperature. So you use the Kelvin temperature. If you double the Kelvin temperature, you will double the volume. And this little illustration here shows you the volumes going up by twice and going down by half as the temperature does the same. We're now going to study Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law is simply the relationship of the number of moles of gas being proportional to the volume in which they occupy. Once again, we've got our piston and cylinder picture, but this time it's a little different. We have a side on it where we can pump in more gas or remove gas. We are going to keep the pressure and the temperature exactly the same during this, and that is one of the criteria for Avogadro's law. As you can see from this illustration, we have a certain number of particles floating around inside this system. If we pump in more gas, and you could do this like with a bicycle pump, as you put in more moles of gas, the volume is going to increase proportional to that number of moles. So it's very simple. Whatever your volume is with one mole, your volume will be double that with two moles, and it'll be triple that with three moles. That is Avogadro's law, the direct proportionality of volume and number of moles. And as you can see here, we have a, a simple equation to help remind you of that. Volume over moles in one state equals volume over moles in the other. What leads to the idle gas law? It's really just a combination of all the laws we've put in place so far. Boyle's law, Charles' law, Avogadro's law. You put all those together and you will ultimately end up with the idle gas law. So let's start with Boyle's law. Boyle's law is pressure times volume is a constant. And we've got that here now with pressure times volume is a constant. Now we're going to bring in Charles' law where volume over temperature is a constant. So we simply add a T to this problem in the denominator. Now we've got what is classically known as the combined gas law. Pressure times volume over temperature is a constant. We now add in Avogadro's law, which is simply putting an N for the number of moles in the denominator. And now we've got pressure times volume over temperature times moles. All of that equals a constant. But this time, the constant is rather special. This constant has a name. We're going to change it from K to an R. And the R is the universal gas constant, which has a specific value. If you choose to use, which we mostly do, liters and atmospheres and Kelvin temperature and moles, then the value you get for R is 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. 
and that's what you use in a lot of your idle gas law problems. There are other versions of R, and it's important to keep that in mind. So use the version of R with the type of problem you've been given, or if you're happy with this version of R, make sure you always convert everything into liters, atmosphere, Kelvin, and moles. That's the idle gas law, and it works over and over in chemistry so many times. So students always ask me, which value of R do I use for this problem? And I say, there seem to be many, many, many different choices. And the answer is, there's really only one value for the ideal gas constant, but it has lots of different units. It is a universal constant. It's pressure times volume divided by the numbers of moles times temperature. So the value for R that you get is going to depend on what units you have for pressure, what units you have for volume, what units you have for moles, and what units you have for temperature. Almost universally in chemistry, we stick to the same value for units of moles. And we've agreed on what the definition of Avogadro's number is, and a mole is the number of particles that are in 12 grams of carbon. For temperature, we're always going to use absolute temperature, and we're going to stick with units of Kelvin. But no one can decide what the units for pressure should be or the units of volume should be. And so as a result, for pressures, we have atmospheres, we have bars, we have tor, we have millimeter mercury, we have pounds per square inch, we have other crazy ones that we can dream up. Volume, almost always in liters, but it could be in cubic decimeters, could be in cubic meters, cubic centimeters, could also be in gallons or bushels or other absurd units. And so depending upon what choice of units you have in the problem, you're going to have to pick the correct units for R. So for example, if you had pressure in atmospheres and volumes in liters, it'd be 0.8206 liter atmospheres per mole per Kelvin. But if you had pressure of bars, it's 0.08314 liter bars per Kelvin mole. Or alternatively, maybe you have Pascal cubic meters, then it's 8.314. And so the answer to which is the correct one, it's the one that makes the units work for the pressure and the volume that you're working with. 